The land down under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline, so you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. Sunday Showcase, highlighting some of the best audio storytelling found anywhere. All right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. And now, with the conclusion of this week's Sonic Summerstock Playhouse, Mr. David Alt. Welcome back to Sonic Summerstock Playhouse 13. I'm David Alt, and pleased to present for you tonight our second feature from the No Soap Radio Players, performing the Jack Benny Show with Returning from New York by Plane. No Soap Radio presents a recreation of the Jack Benny radio program, returning from New York by plane, first broadcast, May 12, 1940. This is the National Broadcasting Company. J-E-L-L-O. The Jello program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with My Wonderful One Let's Dance. Here's a dessert, ladies and gentlemen, that's just as gay as a morning in May. Yes, you're right, it's jello. Rich, radiant jello. A brilliant dessert that brightens up the table like a bowl of gay spring flowers. Jello is truly a delight to the eye and an inspiration to every appetite. Even the simplest meals take on a special attraction. Become a real feast of flavor when there's a big dish of shimmering jello for dessert. No matter which one of Jell-O's six glowing colors you choose, you'll have a dessert that looks like a million. And no matter which one of Jell-O's six delicious flavors you select, you're in for a lot of swell, satisfying refreshment. So enjoy some real soon. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O. And be sure to look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. That was my wonderful one, Let's Dance, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our program tonight, we're going to reenact the events which occurred on our recent airplane trip from New York to Los Angeles. The time is last Monday morning, and as the scene opens, a taxi cab carrying Jack and Mary is approaching the New York Municipal Airport on Long Island. Well, Mary, we sure had a lot of fun in New York, didn't we? Shows, nightclubs, and everything. I'll bet it was pretty expensive, huh, Jack? All right, so it ran into money. Who cares? How often do I get to New York? How often do I go on a spree? And how often does Paramount pay your expenses? <laughs> I don't care. I still feel like a playboy. That's you, a nice on-the-cuff playboy. Anyway, I had fun. Hey, driver, step on it. I don't want to miss the plane. Your wish is my command. <laughs> Well, polite fellow, isn't he? Oh boy, wait till Paramount sees your expense account. Mary, there's nothing wrong with it. Here it is right here, itemized and everything. Look, meals, rooms, tips, taxi cabs, it's all legitimate. But how do you explain this item? Blue suit, $85. I bought that suit to make a personal appearance at Paramount Theater. I wore it on the stage and everybody saw it. Underwear, four fifty. What did you do, a strip tease? <laughs> Mary, let Paramount worry about my underwear, will ya? <laughs> and driver, a little faster, please. We want to get there. It is yours to request, mine to obey. <laughs> well, 
thanks. Ah, isn't he formal? Say, Jack, now what's this on your list? Tips, $18. Gratuities, 37 What's wrong with that? They mean the same thing. They do not. Tips is dimes and gratuities is from a quarter up. <laughs> so mind your own business. Gee, look what time it is. Oh, well, jeepers creepers, this tops everything. Now what? Shoelaces, five cents. <laughs> Give me that list. You're not supposed to see it anyway. Hey, driver, that's the airport right there, isn't it? It's mine to drive, yours to point out. Oh, stop. <laughs> yep, that's the airport, all right. Wow, look at all those planes. Yeah, just think, 18 hours and we'll be in California. You know, Mary, the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. Unquote, I read the folder too. <laughs> Well, it's very impressive. Well, here we are. I hope the rest of the gang are here. How much do I owe you, driver? That'll be two dollars. Two dollars. Here you are. And oh, yes, here's a tip for you. Couldn't you make that a gratuity? <laughs> All right, here's a quarter. Goodbye, driver. Goodbye. If you liked me, tell your friends. If not, tell it to Sweeney. <laughs> 16,000 cab drivers in New York, and I have to get a philosopher. Come on, Mary, the others are probably inside. Here comes Don Wilson now. Where? Oh, yes, and Dennis is with him. Hey, fellas. Hi, oh, Jack. Hello, Miss Hi, Hi, Mr. Benny. Well, Dennis, a few more minutes and we'll be in the air flying back to California. Are you thrilled? I'll say. But you know, Mr. Benny, I've never flown before. Is it scary? No, there's nothing to it. I love it. What are you talking about? You've never been up in a plane before in your life. I've never been up in a plane. No. Then how come in Waukegan they used to call me Wings Benny? That's because your shoulder blades stuck out. Oh, sister, are you pressing? Now where's Rochester with the luggage? Maybe he's in the waiting room. Well, let's go in. Come along, Dennis. Say, Jack, did you have any trouble persuading Rochester to fly? Well, he was pretty scared, Don, but I finally convinced him that... The modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. That sold him. Gee, it's a beautiful station, isn't it, Mary? Yeah, I'm going over and getting the magazine. Okay, bring me a couple cigars. You want those stinkers or is Paramount paying for them? <laughs> Never mind, get good ones. Attention, please, DWA Flight 9, the Sky Chief to Los Angeles, now loading at gate number 10. All aboard, please. You hear that? They're boarding a plane, and Rochester isn't even here yet. You don't have to worry about Phil Harris. There he is over there. Oh, yeah. And look at that beautiful girl with him. Yeah. That's for me. Dennis, come back here. I'll go over and get Phil. Be right back, fellas. Well, we'll be shoving off pretty soon, honey. Gosh, I hate to leave you. Gee, Philzy, I'll be so lonesome without you. Sure had a lot of fun these last couple of weeks, huh, Sugar? It's been heavenly. Oh, hello, Phil. I didn't see you. Hiya, Jackson. You all set to leave? Yep. And, well, who's this gorgeous creature? Oh, pardon me. Jackson, I'd like you to meet Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh... Oh, fine. <laughs> Some romance. What is your name, honey? Minnie Jerkfinkel. <laughs> Jerkfinkel? Yes, my brother Logan is one of your most, most ardent, ardent fans. I know, I know, I met him. Well, it's a pleasure, Miss Jerkfinkel. Uh, give my regards to your brother. Come on, Phil, we gotta get going. Bye, Philzy. So long, see you next year, uh, 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 uh. Minnie, Minnie. Hey, that's a good-looking girl, Phil. Where'd you meet her? My guitar player introduced her to me. Oh, well, how did he meet her? I pointed her out to him. <laughs> ah, the old one, too, eh? You know, Phil, if you... Well, look who's here. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Rochester. Have you got the luggage weighed and everything? Uh-huh. Well, then come on, let's get on the plane. You know, boss, I've been pondering this, and I think I'll go by train. What do you mean? You take the high road, and I'll take the low road. <laughs> and I'll be in Los Angeles behind you. <laughs> now, Rochester, don't be such a coward. Why, flying today is wonderful. It's just as safe as walking down the street. In fact, it's safer. Boss, you're talking to a man that come from a long line of Pullman porters. 
I'm not going to argue with you. You want to go back to Hollywood, don't you? Yeah, but I don't want to ride on nothing where there's nothing under it. Oh, Rochester, you're silly. Flying is the greatest thing in the world. Did you ever see a bird that wasn't happy? Well, the day I wake up with feathers, I'll try it. Listen, Rochester, I've told you a thousand times that the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth okay, wonder... Okay, let's go. That's more like it. Come on. Here's your cigars, Jack. Thanks. What's that you got there? It's a movie magazine, and it's got your picture on the cover. Let's see that. Oh, yes. In color, too. Gee, my eyes sure look blue, don't they? Hey, fellas, look at this magazine with my picture on it. Oh, Jack, take it easy. I'm going to over and get some more copies of this. Attention, please. TWA Sky Chief Flight 9 leaving immediately. All aboard. Hurry up, Jack. Never mind the magazine. Yeah, the heck with them. The heck with them nothing. It'll only take a second. Hey, young fella, give me a half dozen copies of that magazine with my picture on it. Take a dozen. They ain't selling. <laughs> all right, give me all of them. Come on, Jack. The plane's ready to leave. I'm coming. Here, Rochester, take these magazines. Are you sure you want me to go with your boss? Yes, get going. Okay. So, going in. If this plane is the eighth wonder, I'm the ninth for getting on it. And stop talking to yourself. Come on, Jack. We're coming. We're coming. Gee, isn't this marvelous up here? Hey, Mary, see the airport way down there? Yeah, sure looks small, doesn't it? Yep. How do you feel, Dennis? Oh, boy, this is fun. It sure is. Hey, Rochester, look at the airport way down there. Describe it to me. I ain't looking. <laughs> what a baby. Jack, we're flying over the East River now. Look at the skyline of New York below us. Oh, yes. Isn't that thrilling? Rochester, look at the skyline. Both, please. <laughs> Open your eyes. Hey, Phil, Phil. What do you want, Jackson? Excuse me a minute, honey. Honey? Fine way to talk to the air hostess. You don't even know her. I don't, huh? Her name is Miss Rutherford. She's single, comes from Texas, hasn't got a steady boyfriend, and what am I waiting for? We've only been on the plane two minutes. She is pretty, though. That's for me. Oh, you and your that's for me. Say, Jack. What? We're up in the air now. Why don't you unstrap your safety belt? Because you're not supposed to. I'm not taking this belt off until we get to Los Angeles. That's the rules. Well, Jack, you're only supposed to strap yourself when the plane takes off and when it lands. Don, you're not talking to a greenhorn. I've been up before. Oh, go on. You haven't been up in the air since you played Little Eva in Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> it wasn't me. That was my sister Florence. I played a bloodhound in that. And I got a blue ribbon, too. Well, well, is everybody comfortable up here? How are you, Mr. Benny? Oh, I'm fine, Miss Rutherford, just fine. You know, Mr. Benny, you can unstrap your belt now. Oh, oh, uh, uh, have they changed the rules? You see, in the old days, when I was a test pilot, uh, we used to stay strapped in all the time. Oh, were you a test pilot? Yes. Yeah, he used to try out pitchforks in a livery stable. <laughs> Mary, will you stop? Will you stop dreaming these things up? Oh, Miss Rutherford, my ears uh, have been buzzing a little bit. Is that on account of the altitude? Yes, that's caused by air pressure on the eardrums. Now just swallow real hard and you'll be all right. Oh, okay. 
There, that did it. Thanks. Well, Mr. Benny, my ears are buzzing, too. Well, just swallow, Dennis, like I did. Go ahead, real hard. Okay. Well... <laughs> Dennis, you ought to have your skull x-rayed sometime. I think there's something wrong with it. Oh, uh, miss, when are we going to have lunch? Right after we leave Chicago, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. We just had breakfast. Oh, Miss Rutherford, would you adjust my seat for me, please? I want to sit back and relax. Why, certainly. There you are. Thanks. You know, we seem to be climbing higher and higher all the time. (laughs) There I go again. Me too. I wonder what does that. Just think, five hours ago we were in New York, and now we're pulling out of Chicago. Say, Jack, look at that little old lady that just got on. Oh, yes. She's reading that movie magazine with your picture on the cover. She is? Well, <clears throat> pardon me, madam. You know, that's my picture on the cover. Eh? I said that's my picture on the cover. Well, they sure touched it up, didn't they? <laughs> well, a little, but I think it's a good likeness. Hey, Rochester, you feel better now? Oh, I feel fine, boss. Good. How about playing a game of casino? I left the cards at home. Well, what of it? We can get a deck of cards from the hostess. I can't win with them. (laughs) Oh, ho! So that's it. Well, Rochester, that $9,000 I owe you is automatically canceled. Oh, Mr. Benny, if you look out the window now, you'll notice that we're passing over Waukegan. Waukegan? Oh, boy! Everybody stop reading and look out the window! Hey, Phil, look at Waukegan. Don't bother me. I'm doing a crossword puzzle. Look, Mary, there's the city hall. Oh, yeah, I see the dome. Well, I'll be darned. There's Mayor Talcott sitting on the flagpole. (laughs) Hey, Bitey. Hiya, Jack. (laughs) Gee, he must have known I was going to pass through. You recognize everything, Mr. Benny? Sure. There's the Waukegan Hotel. There's Genesee Street, and there's my father's clothing store. And there's your father out on the sidewalk wrestling with the customer. He is not. He waits until they get in the store. What's all the rumpus, young man? We just passed over my hometown, Waukegan. I was born there. Eh? I said I was born there. Well, they sure touched it up, didn't they? I'll forget it. Gee, that was a thrill. Hey, Jackson. What? What's a three-letter word meaning opposite of woman? Man. M-A-N. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, Mary, he's been working on that crossword puzzle ever since we left New York. Miss Rutherford, are we going to have lunch pretty soon? In just a minute, Mr. Wilson. No, thank you. Oh, excuse me, young man. Are you Don Wilson, the radio announcer? That's right, madam, and I broadcast for Jell-O. Eh? Jell-O. Go to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O. What's that you sell again? Jell-O, madam. It comes in six delicious flavors. And look for the big red letters on the box. I sure will. Hmm. Don, if I didn't know that lady was a total stranger, I'd swear that was a plug. I really would. Hey, Jackson, what's a nine-letter word meaning musical organization? Orchestra. Oh, yeah. That was a toughie. And he's a musician. Hey, Mr. Benny. What is it, Dennis? Well, Sunday is Mother's Day, and I was wondering if I could sing my song and dedicate it to Miss Rutherford, our hostess. Dedicate it to Miss Rutherford? What for? Well, all during this trip, she's just been like a mother to me. (laughs) Me too. Drat it. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Hey, Jackson, orchestra don't fit. I gotta have a nine-letter word. Well, how many letters do you get out of orchestra? Eight. O-R-K-I-S-T. Phil! (laughs) Phil, just take your pencil and make the white squares black. That's your speed. Sing, Dennis. Okay. And stop swallowing. O-R-K-I-S. What a guy. Sometimes in the hush of the evening hour, when shadows 
me from the west. I think of the twilight songs you sang and the boy you long to rest. Oh, we little boy with a tousled head that long, long ago That was very good, Dennis. It ought to go over swell on the program on Sunday. I hope so. Say, Mary, that fried chicken looks pretty good. Give me a bite, will you? Why didn't you order some when we did? I wasn't hungry then. Oh, Miss Rutherford, I'll have a luncheon tray, please. I'll bring it right in, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Who took this magazine into a mustache on my picture? <laughs> did you do it, Mary? No, I didn't think of it, darn it. <laughs> well, someone did. Did you, Phil? Not me. Was it you, Dennis? No, Mr. Benny. Hmm. Well, who did it? I did. You want to make something out of it? I don't think that's very nice, madam. Hey, Rochester, get an eraser and remove this mustache from my picture. Okay, boss. Should I uncross your eyes, too? Yes, and fix up that tooth she blacked out. Now, go ahead. Why can't Mr. Harris do this and I'll do the puzzle? I don't care who does it, but get it done. By the way, Rochester, how do you like flying now? Just fine. You know, boss, I think I'll buy an airplane when I get to California. You better wait till your yacht is paid for. You're the down paying man I ever saw. You buy more things that you can't keep. You're right, boss. I had everything repossessed but my first wife. I'm not surprised. Here's your soup, Mr. Benny. I'll have your chicken ready in a minute. And some mashed potatoes, please. Gee, isn't this marvelous? Imagine eating soup while sailing through the air at 200 miles an hour. <laughs> Who pushed me? Nobody pushed you. We just hit an air pocket. Get me a towel. I just got clam broth all over my blue suit. You mean Paramount's blue suit. I mean, get me a towel. I wish that the pilot would watch what he's doing. Now cut that out! <laughs> oh, Miss Rutherford, tell the pilot to watch what he's doing. Oh, Mr. Benny, don't be a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> Woo! Now we're pitching. Oh, boy, this is fun. Fun? Gosh, I'm getting all... Are you dizzy, young man? No, I'm all right. I'm fine. What's the trouble, Jack? No trouble at all, Don. I said I'm all right. You look kind of pale, Jack. Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. Then what's that you got in your lap? The Davis Cup? <laughs> Mary, this is no time to joke. Now stop. 
Here's your fried chicken, Mr. Benny. Whoa! <laughs> Later, please. Open that air vent a little more, Rochester. And put down my chicken. I'll be all right in a few minutes. Okay, boss. I'm sorry. Take the chicken, Rochester. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks, boss. Can I do something for you, Jack? Yes, stop staring at me. Well, Mr. Benny, why don't you drink a glass of water and hold your breath? Dennis, holding your breath is for hiccups. That's all you need. Gosh, I can't understand it. I, I felt so good just a minute ago, and now... <gasps> Everything happens at once. I wish we were in Los Angeles already. Oh, Jack, this is a swell trip. You're the only one that's complaining. I can't help it. I don't feel good. But Jack, an old test pilot once told me that the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds a veritable eighth wonder all right, of the world. All right, all right, all right. That's very interesting. <laughs> now let me alone. <laughs> okay, wings. Mary, please. Hey, Jackson, how do you spell lobster? Lobster? <laughs> now cut that out, Phil. The heck with your puzzle. How do you feel now, Mr. Benny? Not so good, Miss Rutherford. Well, I'll sit right by you and hold your hand. Gee, thanks. You know, you're awfully sweet to me. Now just relax, Mr. Benny, and I'll stroke your forehead. <sighs> Look at the big movie star. Let me alone, Mary. Gee, Miss Rutherford, your hand is so soothing and so cool, so cool. Yeah, your hand is so cool. So cool. Thanks, boss! Rochester! Where's Miss Rutherford? Where's everybody? They got off the plane! We've landed! Oh my goodness! You mean we're in Los Angeles? Sure, boss! Let's go! Well, gee, we're here already, and I feel swell. Rochester, wrap up that fried chicken. I'll eat it on the way home. Okay. Boy, just think. 18 hours from New York to Los Angeles. You know, Rochester, the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> it so is, boss. It so is. <laughs> And now let me tell you about one quick, easy way to answer that day after day question of what do we have for dessert? Now here's the whole trick. Tomorrow, ask your grocer for a box of strawberries and some lemon or orange jello. Then, when dinner time comes, surprise and delight the family with a swell new jello dessert jello cubes with strawberries. Now, the very name tells you here's something that's going to be mighty easy to eat, and it's just as easy to make. All you do is first prepare one package of lemon or orange jello in the usual way and turn it into a pan to chill. Now, when it's firm, cut into cubes, arrange these cubes in sherbet glasses along with sweetened sliced strawberries. Then serve it either plain or with cream. And believe me, the smiles around the table will be just as bright as the gay jello dessert itself. Yes, for full, rich flavor and tempting appearance, Jello Cubes with strawberries certainly rates with the best. So, friends, try this new Jello creation tomorrow. Juicy crimson strawberries, sliced and sweetened, and mingled with tiny, glistening cubes of bright lemon or orange Jello. It's a grand dessert. Quick and easy to make, a joy to look at, and downright delicious. This is the last number of the 32nd program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. Before saying goodnight, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to mothers everywhere. Oh, Mary, did you send your mother a wire? Yes, I sent her a wire, some flowers, a box of candy, and a check. How much was the check? Well, you'll find out. <laughs> Good night, folks. J-E-L-L-O Be sure to listen to The Aldrich Family, heard in most communities every Tuesday night. Consult your local newspaper or movie or radio guide magazine for the day and exact time of The Aldrich Family. 
This is the National Broadcasting Company. The No Soap Radio cast for this recreation included Annette Bohannick as Mary Livingston, Zach Dillinger as Phil Harris, Zach Eastman as Dennis Day, Victoria Gordon as Mary Jerkfinkel, the old lady on the plane, and Miss Rutherford, Paul Covet as Jack Benny, Paul J. Patterson as Rochester, and Tony Semchuk as Don Wilson and the flight announcer. The program was written by Ed Boulogne and Bill Morrow and was directed and edited by Paul Covet. Check out all things Jack Benny at the International Jack Benny Fan Club website. Just go to jackbenny.org. That's J-A-C-K-B-E-N-N-Y dot O-R-G. If you want to see the visual recreation of this program, go to YouTube and search for the International Jack Benny Fan Club, and then choose Returning from New York by Plane. This is a No Soap Radio recreation. Thank you to Paul Covert and the No Soap Radio crew for joining us here for the hilarious Jack Benny. And thank you all for joining us here at the Playhouse. Please don't forget to reserve your seats for next week's performance when we present another double feature, beginning with Project Audium's recreation of a Red Rider episode, Roaring River Renegades, and Rachel Pulliam's Soul Twin Audio Returns for Ring Once for Death. Until then, I'm David Alt, your host, and from myself and our announcer Jack Ward, good night from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And that concludes this week's performance of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, features, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their respective copyright holders and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society and a proud member of the Mutual Audio Network and any shows that continue their run must receive express permission from all parties involved. Join us next week for another new classic. With thanks to our announcer, Jack Ward, I'm your host, David Alt. Good night. listening to Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network, we invite you to continue the amazing audio tomorrow on Mutual with the Monday Matinee. Our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic, and live radio dramas. You can subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed every day for the world's largest curated collection of audio drama or find the Monday Matinee feed in your favorite podcast players. See you tomorrow at the Matinee and thanks so much for listening. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.